Raw Maths Guide to Upper and Lower Boundaries. This is a Grade A A Star GCSE topic. Um, this video is not meant to teach um, you how to do this, but to just aid your revision on this topic. Um, if you're feeling that you need to recap the, the basic skills for this topic, then you can use uh, this link to the video that I've made before about all the different combinations of maximums and minimums you need and different things to do with decimal places, significant figures and whole numbers. Um, each question has a link to it. Um, if you click on these it should take you to the question. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here we have question one. Um, this is a pretty standard question. Most um, questions of this type tend to involve formulas or questions where you've got to divide. Um, always with upper and lower boundaries, the first thing you should do is to think about the upper and lower boundaries for each thing. So if we look at the circumference, C, um, that's equal to 170 millimetres to the nearest millimetre, so that's the nearest whole number. So if we think about that, the next number up from 170 is 171, and the next number down is 169. So the boundaries are the halfway points between these two values. So we've got 169.5 and 170.5. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of discussion about um, is this the maximum value? Um, does it get rounded up? Should you use 170.49 recurring and all that sort of stuff? Um, but essentially, uh, you should use the 0.5 boundaries. They're much easier to calculate with, uh, much much less confusing, and uh, it even says on the examiner notes for these questions that the most success successful candidates use the standard um, 0.5 values rather than attempting to use recurring decimals. So if you use these values, and just keep in mind that we're looking for a value that's less than this, or and a value that can be greater than or equal to this. Um, I'll talk about more about that as we go along. Um, he measures the diameter as 54 millimetres to the nearest millimetre, so the diameter um, 54 millimetres to the nearest millimetre, the next value down would be 53, the next one up would be 55. So our boundaries are 53.5, looks a bit like 83 there, let's just rub that out. Write that again. 53.5 and this one will be 54.5 so those are our values and you always get a mark um, if you get one of the boundaries correct you will get one mark straight away now Dan uses pi equals c over d to work out the value of pi calculate the upper bound and the lower bound for Dan's value of pi well, when you're doing division for the upper bound um, let's just put, call this upper then we would do the biggest value on the top and the smallest value on the bottom. So we need the max for C divided by the min for D because when we divide by a small number we get a bigger value. So that makes the boundary bigger. Um, so max value for C is going to be 170.5 and the minimum value of D is 53.5 and the lower boundary is going to be the minimum value for C divided by the max value for D which in this case is going to be 169.5 divided by 54.5 okay let's bring in a calculator do those calculations it doesn't say uh, what accuracy to use in your answer, um, but we'll just write them down. So 170.5 divided by 53.5, and that gives us a fraction. Um, oh, let's get it right, 341. over 107 um, which is, I shouldn't really put equals there but it's 
eight, eight, so on, so on. That's plenty of accuracy there. Um, the actual fraction itself is probably the most accurate because there's no recurring decimal. There's no. The, although this is a recurring decimal, it's quite a long recurring decimal, so we can't get it all down. Okay, the second one, 169.5 divided by 54.5, and we get 339 over 109, which is equivalent to 3.1100917432. Okay, so we've got a uh, mark for any one correct boundary, which we did early on. There is a method mark for doing one correct division of a maximum by a minimum or a minimum by a maximum. Um, and there's one answer mark for something between 3.18 to 3.19, which this one is. And then there's the second mark is going to be um, for anything that starts 3.11. So there's four marks there. But the key is getting your boundaries right and realising which you need to do, use to get to the answer. Question 2 on upper and lower boundaries. Now question 1 we were doing question that had a, a standard question that had values written to the nearest whole number or nearest millimeter. In this question um, we are looking at significant figures so they've been rounded to significant figures and we start off they're giving you a, a one mark starter so um, it's the same as the last question essentially but uh, they've break it, broken it up so at least you get one mark for doing the lower boundary of D. So if we go we have a look at the, the um, we have a look at D. D equals 50 5.6 to 3 significant figures, so that's between, uh, sorry, 55, 35.6, so that's between 35.5 and 35.7. So our boundaries for that degree of accuracy is going to be 35.55 and 35.65. And for G, which is going to be the next part of the question, I'll do it here anyway. Um, that's 9.8 to 2 figures, so that's between 9.7 and 9.9. .9. So that value there is going to be 9.75, and halfway between those two is 9.85. Okay, so those are our boundaries. So the, the, the lower boundary of D is going to be 35.5. And there's no worries about that being a recurring value or anything because it's not asking you for the higher one. Calculate the lower bound of T, so T is equal to the square root of 2d over g. Now essentially this is just a division one so we're trying to get the um, I don't know where that will get with that line there to get um, the lower boundary of t so the t min we need to use the smallest value on top and the biggest value on the bottom. The square root makes no difference it just makes everything smaller unless it's less than 1 then it makes it bigger and the 2 is not, not significant so we just leave those in and we do 2 lots of d min divided by the g max value and that will give us our smallest um, value of that so we're going to do the square root of 2 times d min is going to be the 35.55 let's make sure our square root goes all the way across divided by G max, which is the bigger one, 9.85. Okay, and then we use the calculator to get the answer to that. So, the square root of got a fraction here, 2 times 35.55 all over 9.85. And that gives us. 2.68668459. Always write down exactly what the calculator tells you first, and then if you need to do any rounding, you can do that afterwards. But that's fine, you can just leave that answer, there's nothing else needed. And uh, that's three marks to that. So we got, um, if we'd actually used whatever value we calculated, even if it was wrong in this expression, and uh, 
we got a value for the maximum value, uh, even if it was incorrect, but we had different values for it, then we would get a method mark for, for putting those values into the formula, so long as they were the, um, the minimum and the maximum values. And then there's going to be um, a one answer mark. The thing I will say about these questions is sometimes it's difficult to realise this is what you've actually got to do on the question. Um, quite often this is the last question or second to last question and a lot of people think, well this is very easy, we just got to put these numbers into this, substitute into there and get a value uh, without working out the maximum and minimum values and using the right ones. So if you see this sort of a question that looks very straightforward towards the end of the exam, it's probably um, because you've misread the question. This is it's not an easy question. Um, but if you know, obviously you know how to get the maximum minimums, you can get a lot out of it. Question three. Okay, stepping up a little bit now. Um, this question is, um, we've got a mixture of to the nearest whole number and then one to the nearest uh, one decimal place. We also have to do a calculation. We're not given the formula for. We're given that the density is mass over volume, um, but to find the upper boundary for the density of a sphere, or this sphere, we need to use the formula for a sphere. We are given the formula for the sphere, so the volume of the sphere is going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. That's given to you on the front of the exam paper. Um, so we need to do that to calculate the volume. We're given the mass. So um, we need to calculate the maximum and minimum values of the volume and uh, the maximum and minimum values of the mass. So let's just work with the volume since we're doing that. So the volume, um, actually let's, let's do the radius first because we need to get those maximum and minimum values to put into the volume. So the radius um, is equal to 6.2, so that's between 6.1 and 6.3. So that's 6.15 is the minimum, 6.25 is the maximum. Okay, so the uh, the volume max volume is going to be when you use the biggest value. So 6.25, because we're just cubing it. So we've got 4 thirds times pi times 6.25 cubed, and the volume the minimum value of the volume is going to be 4 thirds times pi times 6.15 cubed. Now, um, I'm actually going to leave those as they are. Let's actually, well, let's actually just see what the calculator tells them. If it, if it, if it, gives, if it, it um, simplifies it to a nice value, then we'll, we'll use that. But um, if it goes to a decimal, then, then we'll just leave it as the original. Okay, it's not overly nice, but um, we've got that value of pi, and the other one six point one five cubed. Oh, that's square rooted. Cubed. It's, oh, that goes to decimal. So I'm going to really have to leave that one. I think. Okay, I might just leave them as the original value. So now we look, need to work out the maximum minimum mass. Mass is equal to 1,180 grams to the nearest gram, so that's between 1,179 and 1,181. So 1,179.5 and 1,180.5. So that's the max and that's the min. Now, to get the density, we want to find the upper boundary for the density of the sphere. So we want to find the density max, or the, the upper density. So I'm just going to call that density max. It's going to be the max value of the mass divided by the minimum value for the volume. And that will give us the largest value when we do this division. So the mass maximum value is going to just be that 1180.5. And our volume minimum is this thing, 4 thirds times pi times 6.15 cubed. And now I'm going to leave it as that calculation because it gives a decimal. Um, I could have used the memory button stuff or even the answer button. Actually, let's go back. 
So we've got that. Let's use that answer button as the bottom part of the fraction. So we've got 1180.5 divided by the answer. So that's that divided by the answer from the last bit, which is what I worked that out to be. And we get this value, which is 1.211579833. And it says give your answer the three cent figures. Always be careful of any rounding that's required of you. So approximately that's 1.21. One. We can chop that off there. One, two, three. And um, let's use a different colour for that. So we chop that off there at the one. Still not very good. Let's try and be more accurate. There we go. Right, so yes, yeah, so. One, two, three cent figures, no rounding required there. Um, so we get 1.21. Okay, this is quite a quite a tricky question, and it does say on the examiner comments that um, this topic was clearly not well understood or prepared for. The vast majority of candidates gained one mark for the 1180.5 but many showed no knowledge of boundaries. Only the most able candidates gained full marks. So this is a very good distinguishing question between the top students and the rest. So if you can master it, if it comes up, it should make a big difference. Okay, question four. This is a starred question, which means it's worth a few extra marks. Um, I've left this question to last because it's unusual because we have a bit more sophistication to it. By considering bounds, work out the value of m to a suitable degree of accuracy. So this is what upper and lower boundaries are all about. It's about realising if you've done a calculation and you, that's been using um, rounded values, how accurate is the actual calculation? So if we go into this and just work through it, hopefully you'll see um, what the answer will, will be. So the standard thing for this is to work out the maximum minimum value. So this is two decimal places. So the number below 3.47 is 3.46 and 3.48 is the number above. So our boundaries between these numbers are going to be 3.465 and 3.475. So that's the maximum value. Oops, that's not very well written. In fact, let's rub that out. So that's the maximum value, and this is the minimum value for S. And then we've got T. Now, any time we're considering a boundaries question, even if all you do is work out these maximum minimums, you're going to get yourself one or two marks each time. So uh, 8.131 and 8.133. Now, and also with a bit of practice, you can just write these down without doing all the writing numbers above and below. You might be able to just go straight to these values for the maximum and minimum just by looking at it. Okay. Okay, so let's just proceed by working out the uh, minimum value for m. So the minimum value is going to be when we do the square root of s min divided by uh, t max. That gives us the smallest value of m. So s min is going to be 3.465 because we've got taken it from s the minimum and then we're going to divide by t maximum which is 8.1325 and that gives us the square root, let's actually put the fraction in first, square root of 3.465 all over 8.1325 which is 0 0.228890 and go on forever. So that's the minimum value. Let's have a look at the maximum value. So the maximum value for m is going to be when we have s max divided by t min and that's going to be s max is going to be uh, 3.475 we've got that up here and t min is this value there of 8.1315 
Okay, we could actually use those and just change those values in there. I don't know if that's going to be quicker. Let's just see. 475. 315. Okay, so we got 0.229248624243. So, um, pretty much there now. Uh, but by considering the bounds, work out the value to a suitable degree of accuracy. So, if we look at this, um, this is the minimum possible values and this is the maximum possible values. So the values must be between these two. All possible values of the M must be between these two values. So let's have a look. So um, 0.2, that's certainly the same. Then 0.22, well actually both those would round to 0.23, so that's the same. And here we've got our first difference. So this has got an 8 and this has got a 9. But if we rounded it to um, three decimal places, then that would be 229, and that would be 229. And then after that, the fourth decimal place, um, if we round it to that, we get 2289, and this will be 2292. So that's different. So um, we should use three decimal places. So uh, I'm run out of space, so let's try and squeeze it in down this side. So uh, 0 0.229 to three decimal places because this is the same for both min and max values of m. So often in, in GCSE maths, we sort of miss the point of why we're doing stuff. We just do it because we're told to. But this is the reason why we do boundaries. Because when we're doing a calculation, we need to be accurate. We need to know, you know how accurate we're being. If we calculate the minimum and maximum values, we can see that all the possible values, they lie between these. So it can't be anything um, below this or above that. So we can, with, with reasonable um, confidence, say that to three decimal places, these are... Um, this would be the answer to any any possible values of s and t that have been ran to those 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 uh, decimal places. So there we go. Um, really tricky question to get all the way through, um, but certainly well worth the effort because it will differentiate you, the top students between them and the not quite so top. So if you can grasp it, you're doing really well. You do the area times this length here, which is x plus 10. So we're going to have x times 2x all over 2 times x plus 10. And that's quite nasty to try and then simplify. Multiply out this double bracket. I'm sure if you're doing these sort of questions, you've done this a lot. Um, whichever method you want to use, uh, lots of people use the FOIL method which can be abbreviated as a sort of smiley face like this. Well, you're just making sure you're multiplying um, all four parts. You've got to be written in lots of different ways, but essentially it's a half of the two parallel sides added together times by the height between them. And then if we bung that in the calculator, we should get um, to the answer of 13 chord here forms an angle with a tangent 32 of the alternate segment theorem angle formed from that chord is also 32. So x is opposite this angle in the second quadrilateral so they add up to 180. So x is going to be 180 minus 86 which is 94. The intersecting chord theorem where we have this, these values where A times B equals C times D.